the month, the first month of the year, we give God praise and thanks. And somehow we are at the same position from where we left off in last year. There haven't been much changes in our lives around the world. Yes, in Trinidad and Tobago, the diaspora, we are at the same level and at the same spot. However, we have been given fresh grace and fresh mercies every new day. And we want to give our God Jehovah some praise and thanks. So this is Live with Mama Coco Sunday. Emphasis on life, lifestyle, living. And today we are going to be very straightforward concerning what's taking place in Tobago. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, we have problems because the, the last election in Trinidad and Tobago, we are at a level where no one is taking time to speak about or even to explain or to strengthen our citizens. We are lost. So my name is Cora Pantin. And I want to welcome you to this special Sunday. On board, we have our brother. Yes, Kino Beard. Welcome to the show, Kino Beard. Welcome to the show, Joanne Melville. Hello. Hello, everybody. Avanel Hazel. You guys are familiar with these faces. They are all returning guests. Some come as guests, some come as co-hosts. They have they they all elevated to this level on Mama Coco life and style. It's not that other people are not elevated also, but these are who we're gonna have today. And you know what? Maybe having some problem there in New York. You know, we're having some weather, the weather system is giving us some form of problems all over the world because joanne you there in in in, in london you are in england tell mm -hmm. us what's going on there in england concerning the weather and even at the end of the month what happening with the covid it's starting okay it's, it's pretty much cold here it did snow last week um for a bit quite a bit of snow was on the ground but yeah there's no snow today in england i think i think they were saying wales but i'm not sure if that um, any snow has fallen, but it's, it's very cold. Um, with regards to COVID, um, we are still in a lockdown and um, we are sort of in a tier four situation. And so, you know, we can't visit family and friends and, um, you know, you're allowed to go out to work and do your shopping and that sort of thing. And with regards to the COVID deaths, I think, Overall, they've got 106,000 deaths in the UK. I think um, England is about 92,920. And um, in London, uh, last thing I saw, it was about 12,600 deaths in London. And um, so far, with regards to the vaccine, they've um, injected about 8,900,000. Oh, wow. 329 people so far. And that is still continuing. And they've got like new cases over the last 27 days, I think, about 21,000 plus. So there's still cause of concern, but they are carrying on the precautions and, you know, encouraging people to follow the precautions. So what about the new virus that um, the, the, the mutated form of the virus there in, um, in England? Well, as far as I know, they, they, we have a, a, a strain, but I haven't, I haven't heard if it has really wreaked any sort of havoc as opposed to when the first one started. But I know that it is around. That much I know. I, I don't follow too much because it's very distressing. So yeah. I avoid it as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, we, we all pray across the world that mm -hmm. things will get better because I, I, I am affected by it not with the covid i'm affected by the news i'm affected by right. the, uh, the, the 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 constant loss of lives because every, every every day when you hear about the loss of lives somebody is affected because in this world 
We all have somebody, whether it's a friend, whether it's a lover, a child, a mother, a parent, even an enemy. <laughs> we have all day. So, so we pray that things get better for everybody. That's true because somebody that I didn't know the person, but the father has um like a fleet of businesses. He, he is a baker. And I think the son rebranded the business. And so you see that bread is a Ghanaian man. And that bread, you can find it in any supermarket across the UK now. And that was the guy who I think was running his father's business. Only 37 years old, died from COVID. And I think that's kind of oh why I don't God. know. Very dis distressing because he's only young, you know. Yes, so, yes. And that's one of the reasons why I don't look because it becomes very upsetting, even if yes. you don't know the person. Yes. Dear God in heaven, as we come before you today asking you, blessed Lord, to be the chaperone to all of us here on this show, to the show itself, and to all the guests, and to all those who are watching us today. Father, we ask for your presence. We thank you, dear God, for your patience, for your timing, for your love, for your responsibility, and for your anointing. In Jesus' name, I ask all of us to be a part of this. Amen. 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 So um, we, we heard from Joanne. Welcome to the show. Joanne, thank welcome you. back. I yes. love you. I respect you. And I thank mm -hmm. Jehovah God that you are part of this team. Tino Beard, my, my brother, my son, as Mama Coco, we are here. And um, we are here today, a new day for new mercies and for new blessing. And we came across on a little rough road in our last live with you on Wednesday. And um, a lot of people asking me why you're back. No, this is all about who I am and what the show represents and who you are in society. And as a mother and as a friend, and we are here today and there would be no distractions because we understand. I understand where you came from. I understand where we all are. And today, Kino, with all, with all reprieve and great representation, we all showing mutual respect to each other. And this is a new day. Tell us something. Tell us anything that you want to say concerning what happened. You are not here to, to tear yourself down, but to lift yourself up. Because this is who Mama Coco is all about. Okay, so um, thank you so much and welcome to everyone, including the guests, including everyone else who is watching. Um, I think a lot of people saw what was on screen. Um, but for me, the most important part was the relationship between Mama Coco um, and I off screen. And um, I think she knows where she stands there. And I know that role that I have given her um, in my life. And I know that I am able to take, um, to take correction, to take um, instructions, to take, to take discipline. Um, some appreciate that. I'm not going to make any excuse for um, my behavior or what appeared to be lack of cordiality or anything um, like that. And over the past few days, I've tried to put a lot of my thoughts into writing and a lot of um, a lot of this situation that, that, that is affecting all of us. And um, going forward, how best that we can um, proceed. So I don't want anyone to have any misconception that there's any kind of ridges or anything um, between us or anything. I, I really appreciate your platform. I really appreciate um, your forum. I really think it's a great place to share and exchange 
um, ideas and debate. I'm glad that it gives us who a lot of people who are especially part of the diaspora in Tobago and who has Tobago's interests at heart and who has Tobago's um, future um, at heart and especially from the position where we've we we have left that life and in a lot of ways i see that part of us is still there but there's no real benefit for us there and this fight that we're in this fight that i have personally placed myself in um it's something that i intend to see through um it's a battle i know that i'm not fighting for myself and it's a battle that I know that I'm gonna just trust and ask the spirit of God to continue to encourage and enlighten me to be able to fight um, that battle. And I know who my allies are in that battle. And Mama Coco, I know that you are an ally in um, that battle. So I say peace and there's a lot of unfinished business going forward. And uh, um, if the bad boy brand is one that I have to take, I'll wear it with pride, but, um, and do so in the best way um, that I can, but not in an effort to be disrespectful, but there's gonna be, be a lot of passion about, there's gonna be a lot of passion there. And a lot of that maybe is a war within myself because I think a lot of times we fight a war within and I think some of that probably came out on Wednesday. But I greet you in a spirit of peace, love, and um, respect. Thank you, Kino. The guests on the panel, you guys respect what he said or you think he... Definitely, yeah. Yes, yes. Absolutely. So, so Kino, are you saying that you are sorry for, for, for what happened? And I hope the, the audience, speak to the audience a little. Take a take few seconds to say something to the audience who watch you and judge what happened. See if you can say something because our audience is our platform, you know? These are so, the people that making us shine. So what I would say to the audience is that um, we're all in a process. Um, I think last week was one, for me coming out of last week was, was a, it was like a junction for me last week. It was putting away a lot of things in the past and looking forward to what's going um, forward. And, it, and it, was a, it was a family thing for me um as mm. well and i mean i had a lot i was bottled up literally bottled up and literally placed under some internal gag orders by my family and a lot of that on last week came to an end and it's like a whatsapp i did bus i would say but i mean if, <laughs> if 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 i came across in any negative way i apologize um I don't expect everyone to agree with me or on every topic. And I'm not here for agreement or disagreement. I'm just here to share conversation and engage in dialogue. And I think as Tibigonians, we ought to be engaged in, in um, dialogue. Hallelujah. Amen. Out, Thank you. Out of your mouth, you know it came. And we, and as I said, Jehovah is in the midst. So whatever you say, like let the words from your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable in Jehovah's sight at this time and at this juncture we say peace namaste shalom we bring it to an end and let us get ready to move forward so Avanel this is your chance welcome back to Mama Coco life and style this is a special day for you again to give your views give your comments and it may not be what people want to hear sometimes but then we have to let them know what you want them to hear at this time. So peace to everyone, and let's get our first question going. Welcome to the audience, Av Avanel. Tell us something and let's move. Hi, everyone. Um, I want to first say, Mama Coco and esteemed guests, I am so proud 
to be in this forum with each and every one of you. Um, both of you are people I absolutely, you know, all three of you are people I actually absolutely look up to. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't be any other place fighting for any other fight in any other juncture of, of progress. Um, and I, I want to say something that I have picked up and learned, and it's something that actually I try to live by in a sense. Um, it's a little quote that I go by. Men make history and not the other way around. In periods where there is no leadership, society stands still. Okay. I think she said wait. Oh, she said wait? Okay. Put up your hand, I'm not. Okay, sorry. All right, I got a message to keep going. All right, so I'm going to just restart. All right, so men make history and not the other way around. In periods where there is no leadership, society stands still. Progress occurs when courageous, skillful leaders seize the opportunity to change things for the better. And in the situation that we are currently in, I see myself surrounded by courageous and skillful Tabigonians who want to see better for our country. It is, I and I could understand where Kino came from because it's so hard when you stay in from a distance and you see everything you love going down the drain and you are helpless hey. to do anything about it. And you are passionate about your country because there is no greater love that I know for me that I could say I have besides my family, which is Tobago and country. There is no greater love. No matter how far we go, where we go, how long we go, Tobago is still in our blood. It's still in our heart. True. And you can't get rid of that spirit, that fighting spirit to want to see our island do well. It's all we ever want is for our island to do well. I don't think there's one soul that comes to another country that leaves their homeland that ever sits and think they don't want to go back. We always want to come, come back. And we're fighting for something to come back to. We are fighting to give you guys the footsteps and the, and the footing to want to stand up for self and for us because we're not there to do it for you. That's right. So in my message today, I want to say to Begonians, I am so proud of you for everything that you guys have done January 25th. I am proud. I am ecstatically yeah. proud. Thank you. Thank you. Unmute. Please unmute me. You're you're unmuted. Yes. Well, well, well. I didn't hear. Well the, said. The, the, well the, said. The, the... We have another guest. <laughs> a a stowaway. <laughs> Who was the other guest? Oh, that was Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he waved. I didn't get, you see, I wasn't around. I didn't get to see that wave. My God. Well, I, well, I will catch it. I will catch that wave. Well, <laughs> brothers and sisters, we started off with a bang. So here we go with our first question today. And um, allow me, I went to get my glasses washed and clean because the, the room here was so warm that every minute it was just getting foggy. And now we have a question here. Kino, Joanne, and Avanel, what are your thoughts on the recent, yes, on the results of the recent T THA elections? First, we go to, to, to Kino. What do you think? Okay, yeah. so 6-6. Six, six. I mean, what can we say about 6-6? Six, six? I mean... 
it's it's a tie and uh, i think it speaks to the fact that for me what it says it says tobago is one family and that we are one people that is what it says and it says in order to move the island forward effectively it's not going to just take one side it's going to take both sides That's and i right. believe that we are able to get to a place of maturity i believe that we are able to get to a place where we can think like adults and come to the table and negotiate with each other to make tobago move forward we have heard the cries of the people we know that all is not right and in order to make it right we have to come together and move forward not in some sort of fake unity but in a place where we can really capture what re represents the true values of tobigonians and i think one of those values that was demonstrated in the election was the ability that tobigonians i know the people who i knew my grandparents they were honest people and tobigonians want honesty in governance and we want accountability in governance and that's what the results are saying and we're saying come to the table let's talk about it there has to be accountability going forward but we're not going to be turning back we're going to be moving forward to a place of good governance and good accountability and if they're unable to demonstrate it together i think that the pdp which i am a supporter of the pdp is going to have to do it alone oh so you said moving forward with accountability do you think that accountability should be for all the monies that missing and everything else before should we go back there me yes Kino. so it, this is there should be accountability and accountability has to be also dealt with from a place of what i would say grace and mercy it's not letting things slide but allowing but not being vindictive if you understand what um i mean oh allowing for grace and mercy but not being vindictive because i think what's really happening on the other side and the refusal to come to the table is because of the, the type of campaign that was run we know that there have been discrepancies we know that there have been a lot of financial mismanagement and they have talked themselves into a bad political brand and it's unfortunate and it's just time that we we examine that and if you mr beard define mercy for me define peace for me so are you trying to say in a small words or are you going to express and let the people know that mercy doesn't mean that people should be tried prosecuted and go to jail that is what you're trying to tell me what i'm saying we should allow the the natural process of justice to play out whatever that is and like this is i think this is going to be very painful for a lot of tobigonians because of the way our culture is all knotted up and tied up and tied up with each other. there's just a lot of feedback i think this is going to be very painful for a lot of tibigonians the way our cultures are tied up and knotted up but we need to allow the natural justice to play out people need to come to terms with themselves and I'm not going to blatantly say that person thief and that person thief but the way in which it was manifested I never knew to be Goonians as people who blatantly displayed their wealth in their face and the fact is where this wealth came from this really belonged to the people of to be to be Goonians and it needs to be dealt with from a place of fairness and from a place of equity and we want to be really say do we need these people as leaders to 
be able to continue watching over what we have. But I know I said a lot and I want other members of the panel to participate yes, as John, well too. Thank you so much for your input. I still, I still, I still, I still would like you to speak further into the question that I asked. But now, Joan, Joan, somebody making some. Can you hear? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. But Joan, this is your turn. Oh, okay. Um, with regards to the the election results on um, Tuesday morning that we received, I'm really ecstatic, and I was really happy that you can tell that people have fired themselves up and want to have change. And I think I want to just talk about our, our the leaders going forward who initiated the House of Assembly again, Mr. Robinson and people like Winston Murray and all those people who would have been part of the People's National Movement at some point. And, you know, they decided that they became delusioned and decided to form their own party and obviously started up with the Democratic Action Congress at the time. Um, something that we must remember as, as Tobigonians is that I think we have somehow gone backwards with the People's National Movement, right? I mean, I know that lots of people um, um, vote the, the, the People's National Movement and that is people's choices, right? But we somehow, I believe that we have gone backwards because of the vision of Mr. Robinson and the others who went with him when they moved away. So the fact that after um, 40 years, we haven't seen any progress in Tobago, and you know, for the kind of um, revenue that has been garnered over the years, Tobago is supposed to look much better than it has looked. And I think, though we have got a 6-6 six -six situation, you know, that is known as a, a hung parliament in the UK. And I think they've had six hung parliaments in the UK since the beginning of the 20th century. And I think um, in 2017, that happened with T Theresa May. So she had to call on the DUP in Northern Ireland, which is an assembly. Of course, Northern Ireland is also part of the union. Like we are Trinidad and Tobago, and Tobago is part of that union. But they also are governed by, by a house of assembly. So she had to call on the party, call the DUP there, to help her to form the government. Then we had it in 2010 with Mr. Um, David Cameron and Nick Clegg. And so David Cameron had to join with Mr. Nick Clegg, and Nick Clegg became the deputy um, prime minister with the, um, David Cameron um, staying as the prime minister. And I think in some ways, I don't think if the Tobago situation with the 6-6, six -six, if they have to go along that route where they could have a discussion and they decide probably that same scenario would happen because they are the ones who, are, who were in sort of power. And it seems like if the party who are ruling they take the leadership sort of role. Yeah. You know, I, I really, I really want this panel. I really want this conversation. I really want to hear because now I'm hearing something that sounds workable. Yet, are we going to have a, or Joanne still speaking? What's on? Yeah, can you hear me? I wasn't Hello. hearing you before. So okay. I speaking, um, because like I, I said, okay, because sorry. I was speaking ahead. also, but I didn't yeah, know yeah. that you you were still speaking. So okay. you continue because what I'm saying, what you are mm -hmm. saying here now, is giving the people of Tobago another idea, because it behooves me that we have our country and our governance going for all these years. And there is no mechanism in place to deal with a tie. This is ridiculous. All because PNM keeps saying all the years, when we roll, we roll alone. While I was telling everybody, God is saying no one party is going to rule Trinidad and Tobago again. I said it about the election in Trinidad, and people just walk around it, do what they want, he said coalition for Trinidad. And Trinidad was going that way until miraculously 
without warning, racism came in and changed the plan of God. No one party should rule. One party shows corruption. One party shows that people doesn't respect the power of our country's wealth. They live their lives and they run their, their government, letting people believe it's their money, but it's taxpayers' money, our money, the Indian money, the Negroes' money, the 1% money that pay taxes that keep the country afloat. Because what PNM party, I'm saying this, I'm very defined, I ain't going around no bush. What they believe that true governance is shutting down every commodity that we have to save our country. You shut down flour meal, you shut down sugar, you shut down rice, you shut everything you shut down. It does not make sense to me. But but who is okay? Can I interject? Yes, this um, is, no, this it was your it, I yeah. interjected you. Yeah, it's okay. Um, you know, um when when you're in uh, the political system, so when Mr. Rowley is a part of the people's national movement, or what I understand is when when people are donating to your party, and I think it happens across the board, it's just that we're smaller and you see things. A, a little bit more, more clearer more than you may see in, in, yes, in these closer. countries. But remember, whoever was whoever donates to the People's National Movement will be donated with the idea and, and the understanding on their part that, right, if I'm going to donate this much money to your party to help you to with your election, um, becoming elected, then, for example, I want a huge cut of Tobago. I want the airport situation. I want how many lands. So all of these things are occurring, right? And, um, you know, I asked myself as um, with, with, with Mr. Rowley, if he remembers, I, I'm sorry, people, people may not like me saying that, but you, he is a Tobigonian. That's supposed to say something. And, and I'm asking myself, is he not aware of, of some of the concerns of the people with regards to the lands that rightfully belong to us. People, do you understand what it meant to be a slave? Knowing that we were never compensated for working on all these estates over the years. No monies were given to us. Everybody as they brought in as indentured servants were given a payment. They were supported. We were never given anything. You understand? And if you think about America, look at some of the stuff they, they talk about that they were never given stuff. And in the same way, they are still making the same noises. So to Begonians, just remember something. All those lands that are in Tobago, that some of us are just giving away and selling it to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Those lands rightfully belong to ours. We should decide what we want to do with it. Now, anybody just walk in, see that lands are blank and then take it away. It belongs to us first and foremost. We were never compensated for not me or you present today, but our ancestors. But rightfully, we should be the ones getting it wherever we are. It's our lands. We need to hold it. You can't let go. What, you can't let go what is rightfully our own. So wake up, people, please. Wow, that was deep and that was touchy. So we going out to Avanel Hazel. Oh. Avanel, tell us what you think. Oh my goodness, so much, so much to, to you know, to feed off of, of what Joanne and even Kino have said. Um, I think the question that jumps to mind for me is who is benefiting? That's right. it's, not, it's not the taxpayers, which is Tobagonians, and Trinidad as a general, but we're in Tobago. It's not Tobagonians. We have members in our community who can't even afford simple necessities. Mm. Just listening also to um, the young lady, brilliant young lady that you had yesterday and I, the issues that I saw in today's world that mm. she's having, the lack of internet access. 
We don't have the simple commodities. You can't get electricity when you want to. You can't get food when you want to, at least not freely. You can't get water when you want to, something as important as water, which they want to take away from us already because they're already thinking about selling wasa. And the mm. minute they do sell all natural resources, we have nothing left. Who is benefiting? They hired our children in the Tobago tourism. What is that building called? The Tobago tourism and hotel industry. Mm. They hired our children and they promised them that the government was supposed to give them the access to the gate fund. To this day, they never gained access to this gate fund. They are still in debt. They take out loans that now they cannot pay back. And what did they do? They closed the institution. Oh. Our, our children don't have access to education. They have no computers. Our roads are not constantly being paved the way they used to be. And we have the biggest, if not the biggest, and there's two in the world. We have the biggest tar pit in La Brea. Who is benefiting? It's not hmm. us. It is not us. Guess what? It is our taxpayer dollars. Yes, sir. We pay the taxes. Who are benefiting? Is it you, my brothers and sisters? Is it the, the, the person who has the market down at the store, the, the liquor store down at the market? Is it you who trying to make ends meet for you and your children? Who's benefiting? Oh, we know who's benefiting. Because they could tell you they're benefiting and they're rich and they have this and that in their account. They tell you. They show you. And yet you go vote for them. Are you really benefiting? Or is only election time they could come and drop to you a food card, a refrigerator with no food in it, mind you? Hmm. With no food in it, mind you. How is that helping us as Tobagonians? How is that benefiting us as Tobagonians? The things that they have done over the years. They have had over 20 years to prove to us that they are doing better. What has been done? If so, you somebody so, me one thing that has been done, I guarantee you I could tell you 10 things that has not been done. So what what should we do now with the six six? They want to let they want to let PM form the, the government again. I think that's from some of the history I've seen here in the UK. Um when like uh, like I said, David Cameron had that situation. And he had to go with the opposition. And so he formed the coalition with Nick Clegg. But he still became the prime minister. And Nick Clegg became the deputy prime minister. Right? You know, so it's happened. So yeah. it happened there. And I don't know. Because look who has been on the panel to make judgment. A whole lot of Bush lawyers. A yeah. whole lot of PNM, PNM people. Including the main lawyer in Tobago. I don't think he was any independent-minded lawyer before. I thought, I after watching him for all these years, I believe he was a PNM advocate. But now, we are getting really wired up and fired up. Kino getting the first question again. Kino. Yes. This question is for you. And everybody else, but you are going to get the first shot of it. Do you think that justice is possible in Tobago? Where was the where was the seed of corruption ah, corruption planted? And how can it be what rooted out? Okay, so it's like, I mean, this question is a hard question. Do you think justice is possible in Tobago? I feel it's like, yeah, 
I feel it's like King Eve. Take your time. Which son she preferred? It's like asking Eve which son she preferred, Cain or Abel, even after what transpired um, between Cain and Abel. And it's, you're going, it's a really you're going, you're going biblically rogue. Go ahead. I hope, I, I, you, could, I, I, hope could, I hope I could bring the story home. Go ahead. Please. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like it's like asking Eve. It's like asking a mother which child does she prefer. Uh, prefer. And <laughs> it's what I think we need to understand is the people of Tobago need to understand what our true values are. And if we have to begin to compare what our true values are and put them in contrast to any place else, that place of comparison becomes Trinidad. And the values I know of Tobagonians are honest people and hardworking people. And what has and what what really happened is a social decay of our culture and our values because Tobagonians will in of the past would not have stand for the dishonesty and the mismanagement that is taking place this was a this was a deliberate agenda plotted by these people okay it, it was an agenda and so so would you say that PDP party and the turn of the election right now is a call for justice? Well, I think it's a call whereby Tobagonians are waking up and getting back what our, capturing what our real Tobago values are. And that we are, that we are a nation within a nation, okay? Not just an island attached to a state and that we're not gonna suffer from the inferiority complex that one island pro probably wants to impose on another island, that we're not gonna continue suffering from the, the house slave mentality because that, that's where I see all of these things coming exactly. um, from. Because the, the fact is what Tobago brings to the union of Trinidad, if Tobagonians know that, we would have been on our own a long time ago because I do believe that we have the capacity. Um, there are so many of us scattered all about the world. If I have to compare Tobago to and the people of Tobago to um, another country, it's the nation of it's the nation of Israel that we're we're scattered all over the place. There are so many of us in Trinidad. There are so many of us spread out across the world, and we do have the capacity to contribute and to build our country. And if you just look at the geographic space between Trinidad and Tobago, and you draw a line in half, half of the resources belongs to us. It's just because we don't have the capacity to fully develop the island and to be able to fully exploit our hydrocarbon resources and so on. But it, it should allow us to pause and say, if we had all of that resources, if we had all of those resources, what would have happened? There's, there's so many resources, enough for all of us, that the little bit that we don't want to share. Why are we settling for the crumbs? I'm not going to allow people to settle for the crumbs where there are a lot of people that's cutting bigger slices of portions from, from the cake. That is wrong and it's unfair. And now we're in a system where we have a, a executive council that is undemocratic. We literally cre created and are, are now putting forward a fascist state in Tobago. It's undemocratic. It, it might right. be legal, but slavery was also a legal thing. It's not right. People, let's see why you're on the show today. You guys see, because if it's one thing I could boast and say, PNM do not teach politics. They just politicize and they go out there and they stuff things down the people's throat. I am sure. That if PNM had civics going on or teaching young people, they would have never be winning, or the London would have never run and win Tobago four consecutive times. But now that we're having young teachers of politics, 
we have in the, the most infamous, the, 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 the most outstanding politician that Trinidad and Tobago have right now in Watson Duke. Yes. That, that move out on his own with a, just a microphone. Hey, you know, and blow up the system of politics in Tobago, choosing some of the most young, brilliant, astute people. You understand me? And we can't come to put anybody else. When Kapil Dio came out, he came out with a party. Pande came out with people. Watson came out what? Alone. Hello. Fighting against the system that controls and provokes young people of Tobago. I ain't going to say black people alone because Indians are living in Tobago. All of us grew up with Indians around. Whether in Dallafort, whether in space side, you see Indians around living, grow up with you, going to school, sit down in classrooms with you. Roxborough, Bell Garden, Argyle, wherever. Pembroke, Goodwood, Mount St. George. Yes, Kino. Kino, you have your hands up? So the, uh, there's a comment saying that Tobago has gotten hospital, boat, fire station, clinics, and so on. And I think, I yes, this is true, but that is not the measuring point for development. Hey. You understand? That is not the measuring point for development. That That is not how advanced countries judge development you're supposed to have those things once you are governing a people and we live in we need we must have hospital we must have health care we must have mental care we must have prevention against fires we must have water these are the basic necessities that create a nation a country an island this is how you know that you are a you are a prime minister of a place. These are things that I must have. So giving us it whenever they want to give it. Vera, I want to thank you for your input, but I think you ain't get the message. Okay, baby girl. If you are a girl, if you are a woman, because a lot of people trolling, they're not women, they're just men with their all mundane behavior. And I can't stand some of you people who just believe that we should just take what you give to us whenever you want to give it to us. Well, Jehovah spoke and the people went out and they vote for justice, equality, equal rights. And we want it. And what you guys give is not what we're going to call progress. Amen. All the people who home have salaries to receive and they can't get. All the people that working for 600 and $800 a fortnight. You think having a hospital, we really need a hospital because people will be sick and people will die. Yes, Avanel, take it away. If you mm. could just put back Vera's comment, because I'm about to I'm literally about to pick it apart. Because it's one thing to have all those commodities you listed, but it's one thing when they are unstaffed. You give me a hospital that no worker works. You give me a boat that can't even dock for my people to have transportation when they want to and from Trinidad, from Tobago to Trinidad. You give me a fire station, how many firemen are employed? Of a whole island and how many villages? How many fire stations are per village? That's one fire station, right? It have how many village up in that end? What if I have a fire in Charlottesville? How many trucks is there at that fire station that could go and meet me down in Glamorgan with that one fire station that you give me? How many clinics are in each villages? How many people in the THA are employed and they're all Tobagonians? Tell me what is the unemployment rate in Tobago with all the things that you give them. There's, there's still enough that Tobagonians don't have. Because you go out and you bring other people in to work and staff these, these, these institutions. Who's driving the boat? Not a Tobagonian, not a Trinidadian. 
Mm. What have you done for our locals? Who built in the airport? Huh. I think Kino and went up first. Joanne? Is it? Let, allow Joanne to go. Allow Joanne, Joanne to go. Kino say answer. Um, I just want to interject with regards to what um, Ms. Vera Eva S. is saying. Um, you know, as Avanel and Kino would have said, it's all good to have all these things that the present regime has put into place just before the election. Hmm. But one of the things in Tobago for me always helped is a big thing because you know very well all of us in some way would have been impacted because mm. somebody would have been flown out of Tobago to go to Trinidad. They may not have made it back to Tobago. Mm. So when you're talking about um, the things that are being delivered, they must be delivered and usable. You mm. want to have a hospital which is capable of treating people in the island and there would be no reason for the people, persons to be flown to Port of Spain to be looked after. Okay, so putting down um, structures to, to maybe impress the populace is not good enough. We want to have things that we can use and treat our people. Remember, there are islands in the Caribbean which are smaller than Tobago, and they're holding their own, and they are doing all of the things that they need to do with their hospitals and so on. So, I mean, it's not acceptable. It's not. We need to have better. <laughs> you see, people believe that giving us it for an election, yeah, that is pandering. We don't need that. We don't need when you think election coming, you're ready to patch the road. What about all the shocks that people have to buy and things for their vehicles? Vehicles parking up because they can't drive. People tire get burst, you know, from the rotten road. And they don't have money to even buy another tire. Can you know, take us away? You know, this is um, going wonderful. What Avi was Thank saying. Thank you, Joanne. You know, in terms of what Avian was saying in regards to like fire stations, like I remember in 2013 when I was living in Tobago, working for the Tobago News, one morning I'm home and my aunt Sandra said, oh my God, look, look, somebody village burning down. And we literally saw my one of my grandmother's dear friends, she just passed away a few months before my um, grandmother. We literally saw that woman's house burn down, to the, um, burn down to the ground. And there was a fire hydrant not too far from where she um, lived, okay? There was, Charlottesville has, has a lot of firemen in Charlottesville. I remember as a child growing up, we had a, a, at least a fire substation in Charlottesville and we had equipment and hoses there just in case something happened. Let me hear that, Kino. The yes. thing to, to, um, to put Kino, out the fire. Kino, stress on that, that little emergency tender place that you had in Charlottesville. Do we have it still? Yeah, we had a... No, it's not there anymore. That substation is no longer... Um, there, but I remember we had a substation. I remember seeing firemen taking drills, and this is in the like the the early nineties that I'm talking about, where um where this took place. And this woman's house burnt down in 2013. So when Miss Melvin said that we have gone back, we have gone back. PNM has brought brought took us back, and I grew up in a house that has always voted. People's national movement, even though Tobago is not a PNM place, that needs to be clear. Tobago was never a real PNM place. My family has always supported PNM, but with what you know now, we can no longer make that um, that decision because I've seen them taking us back. This is not the PNM of my grandfather and my. If there's a lady. Um, I remember in Charleville, she was my grandfather's aunt. Her name was Aunt Mary. Her name was Mary Melville, actually. And Joanne, I have to talk to you about that Melville. Um, <laughs> yeah. Melville, right. Charleville. Definitely. There could be a, a little yeah. um, kind of connection. Yes. But this, this woman's house, this, this woman's house burnt down and it should not have happened. And in regards to the hospital in Roxborough and flying people out to Trinidad, 
uh, for Charlottesville people, yes, it is mm. an improvement. Going to a dying on your way to um, Tongue Scarborough. is an improvement. On your way to Scarborough, dying in Roxborough is an improvement as opposed to dying in Scarborough or dying in Trinidad. Because people know when we get fly out, we don't come back. We don't yes. come back. Yep. Hey. So you ask yourself again, you are, this is a question I have to ask. I will always ask our lead, if I could ever speak to our leader. Um, you know, you are to be Gonian. You grew up there, you know the challenges. And you're, he's happy to see what's taking place in Tobago. How? How? I, can't, I cannot understand. I question that so many times. You see, what I see is that people want to be in a position. I remember him being the, the, um, the representative for Tobago West. I remember uh, uh, when I was still in Tobago, right? But the fact is that he, he is now the prime minister and still Tobago is just the same way he know it. How? How do you live with yourself? What did you do to... to having yourself attached to, to the party to become what he has become. What did he agree to so that mm. people can just walk into Tobago, take lands and build what they want, taking all our lands. You know, I can't get over that situation. We have a, we have another guest. Who is this? Uh, is that a Kino picture? What's happened? Oh, it's Kino picture. Kino must be using another. Maybe it's popped off for a minute. Maybe. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I really want to, it is really one thing I could say. Who feels it knows? When you're inside the kitchen, is you just really feel the heat. That's right. And to stay on the outside, I could stay on the outside and tell you this and tell you that. And Trinidadians could stay in Trinidad and tell you this and tell you that. But is you in Tobago and is you feeling the heat and you feeling your struggles? Nobody had to tell you that is what you're going through on an active basis. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Imagine this. Avanel, read this. Avanel, read this question. Yes. Yeah. Read this statement from Ruth Passard. Ruth Passard says the solution for the interim, in my opinion, is for the non elected members on the executive council to resign and to have the chief secretary add four PDP to the same, same division. I made an extension and extensive post on the same. This will give PDP oversight in the meanwhile, failure to bring the matter to a solution in a reasonable time. That is three months. The bill passes in the parliament and that is if it passes. It's, it's a bring regional and international pressure on the government, or it will bring regional and international pressure on the government. I hope so, because I wondered about that, actually. I do agree with the resignations of the non-elected. There makes no sense that they are not still employed in the government, and we have to still pay them. If they put them back, people like Quasi back into that position, why should taxpayers still be responsible to pay them? We didn't put them there. We never voted for them. So they need to resign. So I do agree with that. That's Kino, right. Kino, what you say? Um, I about think, Ruth, I about think, Ruth, uh, I think Ruth is definitely right on the ball. You know, I think some PDP, the results clearly showed that we really cannot fully trust one side. And it's not it's not even the side, but it's the, the leadership of the side. Tracy should not be chief secretary. You understand? Because okay. there is there are serious there are serious questions that she refused to answer. And what is she gonna answer the questions now? I mean, if things are there, I mean, the current executive council is there. There should be PDP members there in the interim to, to definitely provide um, balance. some oversight. Look at the division of education right now. Kelvin Charles is no, no longer there. Um, 
Marisha is no longer there. The correct person that should be there is Zia Hackett, that should be um, in that division and work divide the divisions out. But clearly, clearly these people are hiding something. If there is nothing to hide, the only way democracy is going to work is a degree of accountability and transparency. And what we're asking for right now is transparency as we cannot trust you. We cannot trust Tracy. We cannot trust Tracy. But the electorate give us a mandate. We want to work together. We have to work together. There That's is right. no ruler here. 